Um, Danny Kelly joins us now. Um, Danny, uh, morning, mate. And I, morning, guys. I, you're, you're not normally, you don't normally struggle for words, Danny, and, I, and I'm sure you won't now. I'm sure you will pay tribute to a great man. But this guy was, as I saw your tweet, was your idol. Yeah, I mean, it's the reason why you and I are speaking now, uh, Max, because uh, I, I liked football when I was young. When I started to get to go, um, it was towards the uh, the end of J Jimmy Greaves' time at uh, at Spurs. And uh, I, I mean, even at 13 and 14 years of age, I could tell that something incredible was happening in front of my eyes. You're hearing these people talk about him today. And um, you know, as well as having plenty to say, I normally am not short of hyperbole. The problem here is it's almost... Uh, when you get to somebody who was so great at doing what they do, you actually get to the place where language breaks down. I mean, he was an extraordinary footballer. Um, uh, people said, well, I, I've all, I spent the morning already fielding calls, people saying, what, what kind of footballer uh, was he? And you, you say, well, it's hard to describe him because at a time when English football was largely about blood and thunder, he, he, he seemed to be like someone from the continent or something, the way he glitter, glowed and glided around the place. But I'd actually say it's almost more like supernatural because to be so much better than highly trained, excellent people around you doing that, trying to do the same thing. He was just an amazing footballer. And uh, you're right. He uh, he he was my idol at that stage. And, um, you know, I, all, I often tell the story, but it's worth repeating because it is fun. Um, I was so uh, inured with him. I was so uh, mad about it. That my dad it was a very gentle man. And when he got transferred to West Ham, my father saw it on, on the news bulletin, which was then at 10 o'clock at night. And I, I was fast asleep. I was going to school the next day. I was a teenager. He came upstairs and very gently woke me up and told me he was so worried about my reaction if I heard this <laughs> casually at school that the great man came up and woke me up to tell me. I mean, it's one of those things that I'll never forget about him, you know. And were you able to go back to sleep, Danny, or did you cry into your pillow, salty tears? Uh, well, Barry, you shouldn't celebrate people's salty, salty tears quite so joyously. Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I, am, I am prone to lacrimony, and I, yes, I certainly cried that night, yeah. Danny, I asked a caller who had seen him play quite a lot, because I, I didn't. I've only had the no. benefit of seeing him on DVDs and in documentaries, but who in the modern game would you compare him to? And he couldn't give me an answer. He said, nobody. Uh, and I, I, I'm afraid to say I heard that. And I, I, uh, I mean, ludicrously, because I, I, we can't see that I'm listening to him on the radio. I put my thumb up. I tried this morning. I racked my brains. <laughs> um, because now you can see, uh, with most great players, you can see what they're doing. That, that muscle explosiveness of Cristiano Ronaldo, the unbelievable close control with his whole body over the ball of Lionel Messi. And I'm deliberately picking these players to compare him to. I couldn't really see what Jimmy was doing in the same way. It was like there was no, there's no one around you could say, oh, he was like that. He just had, uh, and it's, I heard the word instinct used as well, an unerring instinct um, of where to be and what to do, not just where to be, uh, but what to do as well on those pitches with people who could clog you. Um, and he did the bare minimum of effort Barry, but he was so skilled that he just could get the ball with the outside, the inside of his foot. Not many headers. Let's be fair. Let's be truthful. That would have required challenging for the ball. No part of Jimmy's plan at all, to be fair. Um, <laughs> and he would he, he would just slide the ball where it needed to be to embarrass the defender and then to get it across the line. There's that famous goal. I think it was against Manchester United, wasn't it? Where, I mean, most of the goals I saw Jimmy get were two touches. Um, one to kill it, one to put it over the line with a pass. But he could run from the halfway line as well because that was what was what required. And somehow he always knew what was required, Barry. But I, 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 I wish I was because I'm paid to be an expert on these things. I wish I could make a modern comparison. But I'll be honest with you, there is none. Uh, it's funny you mentioned the goal against Manchester United because we've had a, a message from Roger, a Manchester United fan, who says, Greasy was the greatest goal scorer I've ever seen, a nice guy too. I remember a goal he scored at Old Trafford, a long ball by Jennings. Greasy ran onto it, picked that out, Alex Stepney. He ran off laughing, RIP the greatest. Yeah, I mean, the, the part of it was that he did play the game. Now, look. We have to remember Jimmy's problems with alcohol later on. But when he was playing the game, um, he played it with, with fantastic joy. I think that joy um, was knocked out of him by him not being selected for the uh, final of the 1966 World Cup, um, which is interesting, I think, because he, as well as being, along with Bobby Moore and, and George Best and the Beatles, the, what became the template for male working class heroes, um, he was also the very first of those 
famous footballers to go on to have a second career. And his career in broadcasting is, if anything, as legendary as his career as a player. Mm. The difference, yeah, the, point, the point being, I think the point being that the national accolades that he would have got if he'd been in the 66 World Cup team, and I understand Alf Ramsey's reasons for leaving him out, the team was winning without him um, after his injury in the group stages. He got to be everyone's favourite during his broadcasting career. And I know it was very important to him that that, that he, he, you know, he, he wasn't forgotten after not being in the 66 World Cup team.